Hey there, my name is Provis and welcome back to more Surviving Mars. Maximum difficulty, 1,165% in Hellridge. Um, you know, I was saying we were in a pretty indomitable position and all of a sudden things are starting to take a bit of a turn. We are running low on some supplies such as polymers and most importantly, food is rapidly running out because our population absolutely exploded and I wasn't quite prepared for it. Right now we are desperately trying to get a few jobs set up, especially start producing some more food. And I am trying to produce some seeds, which will allow us to start making use of open farms out in the uh, open fields of Mars. Since we are starting to get enough water, temperature, and so on, that we will be able to start growing basic things like potatoes. Maybe not wheat, which is the preferred crop, but Enough to get some good food. The only problem is we need seeds, like, right now, in order to take advantage of this, and it's gonna be a bit longer. So you know what I'm gonna do? Since we have money, I'm gonna go ahead and finally buy something from Earth. It's very expensive to buy some seeds, but supply pods arrive very quickly in contrast with a regular rocket. So we're gonna go ahead and just do this a couple of times. We're gonna buy out a good couple of seeds Lend them land over here and then get these guys going. Get that cover crop going so we can start building up some soil quality as quickly as possible. Then take advantage of the potatoes. It's going to come down to timing here and we might need to start purging off some of our population. Especially renegades. We have 14. Mainly because we now have three different domes that have populations larger than 14 and therefore they are able to start building them up. Why is no one going to green pastures to die? Hold up, that's kind of important to understand. It means that somewhere, I might have made a mistake. I want all the non-renegades here. Apparently we have quite a few renegades living in the Diamond Dome in Marks, which I should not allow. I want to make sure that renegades are not desirable anywhere else. It's easy to mess up some of these filters, like over here. Hello, no renegades allowed over here, please. Send them off to green pastures. The dome where no one asks what happens to the people who move there. They're never heard from again. Yeah, that should be good enough. All right, no, we're going to try for that. Uh, this is probably going to end up being the last video of this series, assuming nothing goes horribly, horribly wrong. Oh, there goes my concrete here. That's fun. Um, what I'm expecting we are going to do in this video is, one, terraform the planet significantly so that we can hopefully open up the domes, which would be fun. And two, I would love to go down to the underground and find out what happens once we interface with that ancient artifact. Right? That would be fun to figure out. The one that's located right over here. There it is. I did finish up the tech for that right over here, the interface, but that's going to require a lot of materials plus 200 exotic minerals in order to control. And I have no idea what happens when you control it because I haven't tried this yet. So, this is something I'm going to be working on. We need to get more exotic minerals from space. It's going to take at least two or three more trips into an asteroid. And then we need to send a whole bunch of resources down and get this thing. I assume that we don't need a dome in order to work it, but I might find out that I'm wrong on that point, and we're going to have to build an underground dome too. I really hope not. Oh god, a dust storm. Without a doubt, dust storms are still, by a long shot, the thing that can mess me up and make me lose a game. Uh, partly because of power, but also in no small part because of water. Storing up enough water at this point is getting harder and harder to pull off. I might want to get another large water tank somewhere. Do we have any more heating control somewhere? Is there somewhere we could fit? Uh, not a lot of good spots to place down some sort of extra large water tank. I really need more, though. Yeah, this area in particular just is very, very, very water hungry, and I am apparently not taking sufficient care of it. Let's go ahead and build up another water tank, let's say right over here, I guess. That should be in range, right? Probably. God, I really hope it's in range. Um, and then uh, the connections are all messed up, too, because we're getting a little bit full on ourselves here, but all right. Yeah, generating enough water is proving tough. I'm placing down lots and lots of moisture vaporators, trying to keep my water production really high, especially because every time you place down some of these lakes, you start consuming an absolute ton of water. But you need these down by the farms because they do increase the local soil quality by a pretty significant margin. This lake, for example, has been around here the largest, and you can see that it's making a good difference. So that's kind of why I'm doing that. So we really need that water. Not to mention I need a lot more fuel and stuff, but yeah, um, it's 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 rough. We're sort of hovering even right now on food. We're okay-ish. I still have 70 people that are looking for jobs, which is a little bit ludicrous, and an absolute ton of non-specialized workers who have no idea what to do with their lives. I'm literally building down a third university just so I can get them specialized in something. Look how many different specializations I need. 
for workers who are currently going and doing stuff. It's nonsense. All right, sure, why not? Go ahead and launch meteors over here next to my extremely crucial water extractor. That'll be fine. Woo, we built this thing just in time to shoot down a meteor that was trying to take out my open farm. Oh Lord, and they're trying really hard to hit my excavator again. This game so badly wants to destroy my wonders. They really do. Yeah, go ahead and land in this lake. That's just, you know, that's just great. <laughs> Lovely. There is still, by the way, the graphical bug where on certain elevations you can't see the water of the lakes. These are filled. Just at high elevations for some reason they don't show up. They probably will show up down over here, I think. I just, I'm not filling them up right now because I, I still want to keep my water production as high as possible. Oh good, another meteor right here. I'm ready for you. I'm going to shoot you right down. Pew, 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 pew. There we go. Oh wait, here comes another one. Woo! Alright, that one hit. See, here's the problem with your lasers. They have a recharge time. So if multiple uh, things try to shoot you in the same spot, uh, well, you're not gonna be able to get them. So I just lost some moisture vaporator for that exact reason. Yay. Ooh, we're finally about to build the artificial sun. Now this thing I think does take up a load of water when it does start up, but it's gonna create some permanent heat as well as some uh, light so that these solar panels can run at all times. Stored water, 1,000. <laughs> Whoa, wow, wow, wow. Yeah, that's a lot of water. That is a lot of water to soak up there, boys. Oh, man. Um, we'll probably be able to, s to do this, maybe? I mean, what happens if we don't successfully store all the water at up front? W what happens with that? Does the sun just fail and we have to start over? Is that a thing? I mean, I should have a thousand water stored up, for sure, but like, yikes, dude. All right, well, here it comes. Sun! The power of the sun in the palm of my hand! And something like that, I don't know. Something Spider-Man topical references, blah, blah, blah. All right, this tiny little power cable is somehow gonna have to deal with the voltage of an entire sun. I'm sure that's gonna be completely fine. Go ahead and get that built up. And just like that, we are now producing <laughs> 2,500. Okay, in this power grid, we have a lot. Yeah, 1,000 coming out of this one building. My God, not to mention these things. I like how they all automatically point toward the artificial sun. That's actually really cool. That's a nice touch, I like it. So yeah, we're making a ludicrous amount of power over here now. We are never, ever, 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 ever going to have problems with power in this area ever again. Holy frick, this is amazing. Note, by the way, that our open farm is just now starting to get harvested. 1,500 food almost has been grown over here and we're still not even at maximum average soil quality. So this is what's gonna end up solving my food issues for the rest of the game. At this point, we probably don't need all of the farms that I have at this point been building up. This was just sort of a stopgap measure to make sure we were gonna be fine. I'll keep them for now, but this farm's gonna be doing amazingly. This one is using cover crops to start building up that soil quality while we fill up a few lakes and get even more soil quality. You can see that's starting to build up a smidge. Yeah, we're getting somewhere. What we may wanna do at some point is anything that starts producing seeds. Does anything actually produce seeds? No, none of the open farm crops do. Yeah, what we may end up doing then is just, if we don't need food anymore, go to some of these farms and say, you know what, it's time to go ahead and start making some seeds. Wait, why are we still making cure tatoes, I just realized. Freaking, I don't, I don't care about the cure for Earth. Earth doesn't even need a cure anymore. No, nonsense. Ah, perfect, an asteroid that has exactly what I'm looking for. Lots of exotic minerals and lots of metals, okay. Never contain water, that's probably fine. Let's go ahead and visit this asteroid using the Columbo. Of course, that means we have to bring along the maximum amount of fuel. And I need to kind of minimize what else I'm bringing with me in order to actually have enough storage space. I need a lot of everything. This actually would be one of the rare occasions where I think it might be worth having a second um, asteroid landing rocket arrive so we can gather up even more, because this has so much stuff that I need. You think that makes any sense? It might. Um, we don't need as many metals. I shouldn't need much, if any, concrete. Certainly not too many polymers. And I guess as long as we bring along our prefabs, a couple of auto extractors, we'd be fine. Now, what we could do instead is bring along some colonists and actually build up some, like, manned colonies up over there. That would be an interesting ploy, but I'm not sure that's what I want to go with. 
I do think it might be worth trying to bring along an RC transport and maybe... Well, no, these guys are too heavy. Let's, let's see what's on here first and then I can send up a second rocket if needed. All right, let's see what we got. Okay, there are a couple of anomalies, uh, most of which are actually useless. Discovering new text does me zero good, so it seems to me that we mostly just want to set up right along over here. Plenty to gather from in this area, my god. Um, and yeah, a second rocket right over here actually seems completely warranted. I have another one. The ALF-1. Sure, let's expand its cargo module first so we'll be able to carry even more stuff, and then we'll go once again. Here we go. This is what I call a proper asteroid mining operation. Feels pretty good. We've got 13 souls here to extract as much metals and as many of these exotic minerals as we can. So far doing fine down here. A deep deposit. Wow, 169 in one spot. Not half bad. Wish I had some extra fuel so we could go ahead and fuel extractor these things, but oh well. Um, yeah, we actually even brought even like the perfect amount of polymers and stuff to keep this all going. So this is going to be outstanding for me. By the way, we have reached the point of the game where I've researched every single technology available. Now we just have things like Martian patents and copyrights. The only use for science for the rest of the game is to make a load of money. Which is great. Also, back on Earth, or sorry, Mars, I am making a game development studio. So now we're making Crusader Kings 3, which apparently this game, Surviving Mars, needs to be updated. This is a little bit behind the times, but all right, you know, in the future, we create this mythical game called Crusader Kings 3, and everyone loves it. Hey, terraforming progress. No more cold waves because we hit 50% temperature. That is finally done and over with. Awesome. We just need to start increasing that atmosphere. But you'll notice we're having problems with the atmosphere. It's actually going down very rapidly right now, and that's because the gosh dang atmosphere keeps leaving. It's like it doesn't like me or something. There's no gravitational pull, or at least not same type of, uh, sorry, not gravitational, magnetic field, there we go, around Mars. So that's kind of part of the problem. I'm trying to build out one of these core heat convectors, which will at least to a degree solve the problem. It will consume some water and stuff, but, wait, no, this is a heat thing. No, 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 what am I talking about? Where's the thing that I need? Magnetic field generator, that's what I need. But at the cost of 250 freaking metals, like, that's, that's really, really, really expensive, dude. Really expensive. Oy, you know what I've got, though? Lots and lots of money. I say we go ahead and buy another rocket and just start mass importing stuff from Earth. Oh, I know it costs a lot. I know it does, but at this point, I'd like to just start getting some stinking speed in this run. We've been going so slow, and look how much we are consuming. My God! <laughs> this is nuts. Terraforming progress, 50% atmosphere, no more dust storms, just when one was about to approach, that's amazing. Also, we get blue skies, which means the entire look of this game is about to get very weird. Uh, apparently still some toxic rain, that's unfortunate, but yeah, uh, blue skies, Mr. Blue Sky, I, I was singing about this before. <laughs> but now the entire world is going to stop looking quite so red, it's going to start hurting my eyes after a while, I've been getting so used to the angry red planet. Hey, our first real rainfall. Excellent. The more that happens, the more that the soil quality just starts increasing literally everywhere. So from here on out, we may not even need the lakes just to keep our farms running. That said, I mean, we're sitting on now 2,000 food. Food is um, no longer a concern. These open farms are really powerful if you can get some of the local soil quality up and running. All right, only another soul and a half or so left on this asteroid, and we have loaded ourselves up with as much as I can. Uh, at least another 150 metals, plus another 100 or so exotic minerals. That, uh, how much does it cost again in order to build the, uh, the thing? 200. That means we should now have enough exotic minerals that we can fulfill our goal of getting the ancient device up and running. That's exciting. All right, let's go ahead and launch. You know something else I'd like to build? Just because. I like to get this Omega Telescope up and running. We got plenty of metals, concrete, and electronics. Let's go ahead and do it. You know what this thing does? Unlocks a whole bunch of breakthroughs. I'm just curious. With my unbelievably bad luck with breakthroughs, if I get another, what is it, six or eight? Am I finally gonna get all good ones right at the end of the game? Or are they all still going to be garbage? By the way, down here in the Ancient Artifact area, I'm gonna go ahead and start working on this project. So, the Ancient Interface is gonna take a load of metals, electronics, machine parts, exotic minerals, and so on. We'll also set up a uh, triple electric scrubber in this area to make sure that the maintenance is kept down low. A quick support strut will prevent any more falling rocks here. And, did they change this? I thought it used to require exotic minerals in order to um, maintain these things. 
No, now it's just the build and metals to maintain. That's actually a lot better. Thank you for that. Uh, this thing also consumes 80 power. So I'm building a whole bunch of sterling generators, including an extra one just to keep this scrubber running so we never have any maintenance issues. Now begins the unbelievably horrible process of lots and lots of clicking to bring everything down. Alternatively, we just go ahead and do the transport Congo via auto, and let's just see what happens. Let's see if this stuff is smart enough to actually bring over all the materials we are going to need via the elevator and bring them right on over here. Oh, here comes the coveted Omega Telescope. All right, this should be good for me, right? This should be like really good for me? Come on, come on, breakthroughs, lots of breakthroughs, lots of good ones, three? Only three? I thought it gave me way more than that. All right, three, what do we get? Instant and free pipe construction, they don't suffer leaks. Man, that would have been useful back when I was having dust storms and now it's kind of useless. Space rehabilitation, colonists have a chance to lose a flaw on their journey to Mars. Absolutely useless. And domes cost less basic resources. Oh my God. They're all basically pointless. I cannot believe that almost every single breakthrough in this game has been a complete and total waste of my time. Not a single top tier breakthrough in this game, except for maybe one or two like the pipes, which is very helpful, but even then not necessarily top tier, and even then way too freaking light. Okay, this has been the weirdest freaking maximum difficulty run ever. I'm so glad that I got lucky with the bugs working in my favor for once, because otherwise, I'm not sure how it's possible I could have done this. I'm really not sure it is. You need some good breakthroughs in order to have a good chance at ma uh, maximum difficulty. I would have had to restart this series several times over looking for it. And by the way, for those who might be wondering, no, breakthroughs are not locked to a specific map. I checked this because I was so confused as to how horrible my breakthroughs were. Uh, you, I'd use a cheat mod just to kind of like open up the map and did this like three or four times just to uh, unlock the map and unlock all breakthroughs to see what would have been locked to the map. And it's randomized every time. It is completely random which breakthroughs you are going to get. I just got unbelievably unlucky. You know something else I'm gonna take the liberty of doing? Building a space save elevator. Why not? I mean, we've got 2,000 rare metals that I'm sitting on right now. Using the space elevator, we can just send this stuff straight to Earth for significantly cheaper. Not to mention, we'll be able to get better prices if you want to import stuff from Earth, including metals and such. And I've got lots of money. If there's anything I'm good at right now at this point in the game, it is making ridiculous amounts of money through science and video games. Thank you, Paradox Interactive. So, let's take advantage of that. For the record, by the way, it looks like the auto button on the elevator does not work the way that I want it to. Um, I can manually click on this and say, hey, make sure you always keep a certain minimum amount of a resource or something in the uh, underground, which is nice, especially for things like fuel where you're gonna need your shuttle's up and running pretty much at all times. Also for things like food and stuff later, but for the most part, this doesn't do me a whole lot of good. Now nope, we're gonna have to swap over to manual and I'm gonna have to give myself some carpal tunnel, bringing in every little bit of exotic minerals I can get my hands on. All right, space elevator is ready. Now we are just waiting to export ludicrous amounts of rare metals. Huzzah, easy enough. Okay, we are just about done. There's the ancient interface. All right, what do we got? Construction of the ancient interface went without a hitch. Our colonists were very hesitant when approaching the artifact to connect the cables, but even that seemed to go without trouble. When turning on the interface, for a moment, all nearby drones ominously drove towards it for a moment. They gradually returned to work as the interface fully got up and running. The artifact seems to be more potent than we thought. Not only is it able to send radio signals throughout the underground, it's also able to remotely charge all drones we connect to it. Our scientists even found hundreds of other protocols we may be able to access. They've got a number of upgrades in mind. Upgrades, really? Okay, so what? It it can charge and control drones. It's a drone hub. 200 more exotic minerals? 200 more? Oh, good lord. Okay, something weird has happened. Apparently my rockets now take 70 fuel and not 65, which means two of my three rockets actually can't launch unless I can figure out a way to get some fuel out of one and into another. Which means I might be about to lose all these exotic minerals and I have two souls left to figure it out. What the heck? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. All right, I'm buying a whole extra asteroid lander just for the purpose of delivering fuel so I can get all my rockets back home. <laughs> 
This is an emergency situation, gents. Oh god, the new problem is I actually don't have any space to land the darn thing. It's too many- ah, there we go! Okay, land it! Land it quickly! Quickly! We've only got a soul left before it's too late! Boom! Alright, say goodbye to all the drones. Who cares? Get the fuel out! Get the fuel out! For the love of god, get the fuel out! Woo! We got the fourth rocket out of there just barely in time. Holy cram! Alright, and 100% temperature. There we go. Alright, so here come... All of those precious exotic minerals. So I'm finally gonna be able to get that ancient artifact upgraded. That's the only thing I've been holding off on at this point. All right, this took me a while. What happens when you actually upgrade the interface? All drones have become indestructible, no longer needing recharging and carrying extra resources. Really? That's it? That's all? That's it? That's all this thing does. It's it's a super long range. It's, I mean, it's like, it's a ridiculously long range. Don't get me wrong. Like, it certainly seems like it gives me range for the drones for the entirety of the underground, and now all of them are indestructible, assumingly from rocks. So if you're gonna commit to building an underground base, this definitely makes your life easier in some ways, but holy crud, I don't think it was worth this much effort. <laughs> Not even a little bit do I think it was worth this much effort. My god. All right, well, we're up to 90% atmosphere. I just need a bit more water. And ba 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 boom The planet is now officially habitable! Oh my god, that took me a while. This is taking me about three uh, hours to record this particular episode. But now, with a breathable atmosphere, it's probably time to go ahead and open up the domes. Boom! No longer do we live underneath a dome and a canopy of glass, but instead, we can breathe the clean air that is our new world of Mars. And for the good measure, I also did build out Project Morpheus, just so you know. So I, I think the only wonder I literally didn't build is a Geoscape Dome. All right, guys, that is our maximum difficulty run at 1,165%. It was touch and go in a few locations. We're definitely in a good spot now. Nothing can possibly touch me, but... um. Yeah, it was hard to get our feet under us, and uh, had we not gotten lucky with some of the bugs, it would have been a lot tougher. Then again, had I gotten any luckier, any luckier with the breakthroughs, I think we would have had a much easier time, so I don't know. Maybe it kind of evens out. Regardless, this was a lot of fun. Now, at the end of the day, the below and beyond content with the underground and the asteroids is not absolutely crucial. In order to enjoy this, you'll notice we didn't even get to that until the very late game. The asteroids are actually the most useful, only because you can get a lot of extra metals at times when you desperately need it. As long as you can get the fuel in order to keep that going, you'll be in a pretty good spot. The underground has its uses, but again, I am found I find that just the, the amount of effort I have to spend down in the underground moving everything around is just not worth the amount of time and attention I have to put into it. It'd be nice to send, let's say, a dozer down here, and the automated mode also automatically clears out cavens, so I don't have to sit here and do this every single gosh dang time. That's the only way that I think the underground would be worth it. Otherwise, it needs to be mostly a set it and forget it kind of a thing. Regardless though, I got, had a lot of fun. I certainly hope you guys had a lot of fun watching this. If you did, then I would of course ask you to hit that like button, leave a comment, subscribe, hit that notify bell, and I will see you guys next time.